Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back to being here on Liz. And today we're going to be talking about another 27 Club. His name is Pete Ham. Now, if you're new here, I talk about some true crime here on my channel. For the month of January, I am covering 27 Club members. Now, if that piques your interest, I highly suggest you hit that subscribe button, turn your post notifications on to all, that way you know whenever I upload. And don't forget to like this video, any video that you like, that way I know what you like. Uh, that's a lot of likes in the same sentence, but that way I know what to keep posting. I kind of just do my own jazz when it comes to the cases I cover, but there are some cases that people have commented on that I do have in the works, so don't, don't get your panties in a wad. Um, but anywho, let's get into today's case, shall we? So, best known as the lead singer for the 70s rock band Badfinger. I am discussing the death of Peter William Ham, or Pete Ham as he was called. Now, leading up to his death, Badfinger was in deep water with money. Like, they were serious trouble when it came to money. The salary checks that were printed for March of 1975 didn't clear, and then the checks for April never came. This would set Pete Ham into a panic because he just bought a house and his girlfriend was pregnant. So obviously no cash flow. He just bought a house. He got a baby on the way. Serious issues. So Badfinger tried to continue on without their manager, Stan Poley, but they were declined over and over again. This is due to extremely restrictive contracts that Poley had and also due to impending legal action from Warner Brothers. So Warner Brothers was actually suing Stan Poley due to an advance that vanished. And this all had to deal with that figure. Pete Ham continuously tried to contact Poley, but was never able to reach him, unfortunately. On the 23rd of April of 1975, Pete actually received a phone call from someone in the United States, and they told him that all of his money was gone. It had all disappeared. This absolutely devastated him. He went out for a bender. Um, he actually went out with Tom Evans, and they went to the White Hart Pub. This is where he would consume about 10 whiskeys, and it was around 3 a.m. on the 24th when Evans drove him home. So after he came home, Ham then proceeded to go into his garage studio, and this is where he hung himself. His suicide note wrote about loving Anne and Blair, which is Anne's son. He also said that Stan Poley was an absolute soulless bastard, and it is thought that he ultimately hung himself due to his inability to cope with the disappointments that had happened during the duration of his life and with Badfinger. So in the months before his suicide, it is said that he was actually showing signs of his mental capacity diminishing. Uh, he would take cigarettes and he would burn his arms and his hands. And people saw these. They saw the burn marks and saw that they were self-inflicted. So obviously a red flag right there. And following his death, the contract that Badfinger had with Warner Brothers was completely dissolved. I think the worst part about his death, not just his death, but the fact that his daughter, uh, which I believe her name is Petera, it's spelled like Peter, but with an A at the end. Um, or maybe it's supposed to be Petra, but I think it's Patera. She never met her father because she was born one month after he died. That's so sad. It was so sad to read that and to, to watch the documentary I did on him. And, uh, oh, it hurts. It hurts. So his legacy is, well, his legacy of being one of the earliest to really make power pop popular is everlasting. Also, to commemorate his legacy, a blue plaque in honor of him was unveiled in his hometown of Swansea City. and It was unveiled by the city council on April 27th of 2013. It's really pretty. It's just a nice blue plaque. And it's something special that everybody could forever remember Pete Ham. 